of course, Seinfeld uh, was a world unto itself. You know, it really uh, impacted television, I think, a lot. And to this day, I get people, uh, wherever I go, I'm in New York, Los Angeles, I'm in Europe, for Christ's sake, I was in uh, Australia. Uncle Leo, Uncle Leo, they come, pour, so help me God. They walk down the street and they pour out of the goddamn stores and restaurants and say, Uncle Leo, grab me an autograph, you know, and then sign it and take a picture with me. I said, this is years afterwards. They don't know my name, unless it was just fine. But Uncle Leo, uh, it's like a curse now. <laughs> I swear, I can't believe it. I was at the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. Is that the Western Wall? I don't know. And uh, I'd never been there before. It was a Sunday afternoon. And I was standing there just... Uh, Kind of quite taken with what was going on at the wall, people going up to the wall, you know, and praying, putting notes in the wall, you know. And, uh, and I was feeling very religious, I don't know what to say. Uh, very quiet. And all of a sudden I hear, Uncle Leo, where's the watch? It's one of the shows. It was like sacrilege at the wall, you know. So, but everywhere I go, I still have family, which I haven't answered this last batch, uh, for Uncle Leo. And I'm delighted. It's never happened before, you know. I'm thrilled. It's going to stop, but while it happens, you know, I, I love it. That was a strange experience, uh, Kelly. It's a very unique experience. Uh, we shot the whole thing in Yugoslavia. It's cheap. Sure. Yeah. And they use the Yugoslavian soldiers as American soldiers or whatever, which they did. Huh. They blew up half of, half of the city, I think. What? Bridges and buildings and I don't know what the hell. They were really blowing them up. And there's this guy who was a demolitions expert on the show. And I was watching him a couple of times during the, uh, the demolition. And he had this uh, little smile on his face. That was a strange reaction to him. I, I found out he was a Nazi demolitions expert during the, during the war. <laughs> the movie itself was great fun to make, you know. Uh, a lot of uh, good actors on it. And uh, I remember Don Rickles was on it, and Don was a... Crapshoot. Yeah, I was, I, that's right, that's right. And he's a funny guy. Don't get him on you, you know. And he was on me for a couple of days there. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. He lets you have it, you know. <laughs> Jesus Christmas. Uh, a lot of actors who I had known to work with, you know, a number of times, and uh, uh, liked, respected. Carol O'Connor was an old friend. Uh, Telly Savalas. And I forget this one scene in which uh, Clint Eastwood, he was Kelly, Kelly's hero. During one of the scenes where Telly and I were running around, the bombs were dropping, we were Chris just screaming in all directions, you know. Clint comes walking over. And I don't know what his dialogue was, but it was pretty much like this. And we're screaming. The director walks over. Brian Hutton, very nice young man. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Eastwood, uh, you think we could get a little more, uh, you know, excitement and uh, when you come on, you know. I was watching Clint during this whole thing. He didn't nod, didn't acknowledge that he had heard anything, didn't say a word one way or the other. The director was waiting for something, Clint didn't. 
And Joyce said, okay, let's do it again. So we did it again, Clint did exactly the same thing. So I'm waiting this time and the uh, <coughs> deck says, hold it, hold it. Walks over, uh, Mr. Eastwood. This time it's Mr. Eastwood, not Clint. Uh, and he explained the whole situation to them. You know, the, 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 the Germans are so-and-so and the, the planes are doing that, 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 that. So I want to get you know, a lot of excitement running around and Clint again was just... He didn't put him down. Didn't uh, deny what the director was saying. Just listen to him. Went ahead and did exactly the same thing. And it worked. That punk knew what would work for him. He knew what Clint Eastwood had and what he could sell. And what will be successful? And he was right. And he's an excellent director. Excellent director. I, I did his first show with him. I think it was his first show. And when he gave me direction, I knew that he knew how to deal with actors. He spoke in actors' terms. And he let us free to make the choice ourselves of a suggestion that he had for us, rather than give me some anger here, give me some do, do, do a little more so and so. And you're doing that because the director wants you to. Clint didn't do that, so I know damn well he was going to be a good director, and he is. One of our best now. Well, there, there, there was one show called Playhouse 90, which is a 90 minute uh, show. <laughs> and I did a number of those, and uh, they took pains with that. They had a lot of money comparatively speaking, and had good people and good scripts from Playhouse 90. And at the time, it was probably the, the biggest hit on television for a number of years, Playhouse 90. I lived in Hollywood at the time, up in the hills, and a friend of mine, Geraldine Page, was a close friend of mine. We were in class together, Uta Hagen, we did scenes together. I loved Jerry, just I loved her. And uh, Uta said to us uh, one time, she said, uh, Uta Hagen was our teacher. She said, uh, why don't you and uh, Jerry do uh, uh, some British prose? I'm a young actor, a young kid from the Bronx. What the hell do I know about British prose, you know? Give me a break, you know. Uh, telephone rings and it's Jerry. She said, would you like to do a Playhouse 90? Well, I picked myself up off the floor and I said, yes, yes, I do, I do. So she said, okay, show up at uh, CBS Fairfax uh, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. So I went there and had to read for the director, John Frankenheimer. And it was a play called The Old Man, based on a story by Horton Foote that he wrote called The Old Man, about the Mississippi River, that's the old man. Anyway, Frankenheimer gave me uh, uh, the scenes to read, and something happens to me at times, and it happened then, and that is, screw it, I'm going for it. Nerves or no nerves, onlookers, no onlookers, problems, no problems, I'm going for it. May fall on my butt, but I'm going for it. And I did. And he said, Where the fuck have you been all my life? I've been looking for a guy like you. God damn it, you're going to be working the rest of your life. I'm hey, man, listening to this stuff. And this is a top, top director. Frank and I did use me again about four years later in Birdman of Alcatraz. I can recite the Gettysburg Address? Yeah, that'd be great. I don't know it. <laughs>